international heat stress happens in occupational military sports context where the individual is capable of producing a high uh, workload. Whereas the another, another kind of heat stress is what I call it as passive heat stress, where it usually occurs to our vulnerable elderly. They are not working very hard, but they are sitting in the hot environment. Hi, I'm Jason Lee. I'm a thermal physiologist from the Human Potential Translation Research Program at the Yong Luling School of Medicine, National University of Singapore. Bulk of my job requirements require me not to undertake research in a hot environment. The main environment threats that we deal with that will curtail work outwards is heat. So thermal physiology has been the, like the staple you know, of what I do in my work. We are most concerned in these young, fit, motivated individuals. These are the ones that are capable of producing high amounts of heat. So the soldiers, the fit athletes, they can run very hard and they produce a lot of heat. The Singapore Civil Defence Force, we are talking about the first responders. So those groups are high risk. But with good mitigation strategies, we believe we can curb the internal heat strain and therefore while they are operating in a hot environment, they can still be safe and effective. We are now at the Home Team Tactical Centre, in short, HTTC. This is one of the main venues where the first responders from the Singapore Civil Defence Force train. Here is an example of a group of individuals working under exertional heat stress. Not only they will be working hard, but also in an environment where it's hard to lose the heat, where we call it uncompensable heat stress. We have a very high thermal demands, both in the climatic condition and operating conditions. So we experience a high thermal stress, and this is where we are actually uh, in next year. So we are actually commissioning our emergency responders fitness conditioning and announcement lab. We have uh, previously mentioned that we are going to look into the physiological and psychological aspect of every performance uh, emergency responders. So we look forward to closely work with the academias to leverage on science and technology and use evidence-based findings to enhance uh, the performance of our responders. There is an array of heat mitigation strategies we can use to curb heat stress in this kind of context through strong systematic aerobic conditioning, heat acclimatization, cooling, wood rest cycle and finally hydration. Ideally, we want to introduce this package in a holistic manner, but it's good for us to understand the degree of heat strain they are experiencing so we can prescribe more targeted mitigation strategies. We also want to equip them with the knowledge of the principles behind each of these methods. In line with that, we're going to design a curriculum and we will bring the first responders in, in this case, you know, to teach them the science behind each of these strategies so they know the how, the why, and not just the what.